One of the biggest problems we come across when we're trying to scrape large amounts of data is the fact that if we are making requests synchronously, i.e. one after the other, it takes a lot of time. We spend a lot of time waiting for things to happen and not getting the data that we're after. Now, there's two ways that we can solve this issue. The first one, probably the most common, is going to be async. Making your code asynchronous, it means essentially what we can do is we can get our program to do things whilst it is waiting for the responses to come back from the server. It fills in those gaps nicely and it means that we cut down a lot of time just by not waiting for the data to come back. But async is inherently quite complicated, especially if you are trying to put it into code that you didn't write to be async in the first place. There are some really good async HTTP clients in Python, HTTPX and AIO HTTP to name a couple, but it's actually quite difficult to put in and it can can be a bit more complicated. What I'm going to talk about in this video is the second approach, which is using threading, more specifically using concurrent futures and the thread pool executor. And this is the best and easiest way, in my opinion, to make your web scraping scripts run quicker. When we're going to be scraping faster and faster for this project, making more requests, getting a set of high quality proxies is going to be essential. And thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Node Maven, we're going to be avoiding getting blocked and banned from extracting the data that we need. So as detection algorithms have been getting better and better, and a big part of that is the quality rating of your IP, low quality can get you rejected right at the door. I found a relatively new proxy provider called Node Maven that has 90% clean and safe residential proxies compared to as little as 25% from other providers. In fact, let's check this out now. As each proxy has its own quality score and this directly affects how hard or easy it is for websites to detect you, let's use this Firefox extension called Pixelscan and check out Node Maven's claims. So they have industry first IP filtering, meaning as users, we are only given IPs once they've passed through the advanced quality assurance algorithm, meaning more time scraping and less fuss for us. Combined with the low prices of just €35 Euros a month or €3.99 for a trial and the fact that no Maven traffic doesn't actually expire, it makes it a great choice. In fact, if you want to try it for yourself, you should go to the link in the description and use the code JWR for an extra 2 gigabytes of bandwidth on your purchase. I'm going to be using my Node Maven proxies in this project so I can show you just how easy and effective they are. It is going to be dependent on your code and what you're trying to achieve, but the way that this works with parallel processing, i.e. threading, is that we can hand functions off to different workers and we can get them to execute those tasks on their specific worker, their specific thread, and then return the data to us and then take another one. Now this is obviously much more CPU bound and is generally used for more CPU intensive tasks, but we can absolutely make use of it here. It's especially powerful if we're using something like Selenium and Selenium Grid where we can actually hand those off to those workers and those sessions and have it manage it all for us. Threading can be difficult to manage too if you're trying to do things manually, you can have, you can have sync issues, but with the concurrent futures module it handles all that for us and it's really as could be as simple as just adding a few extra lines of code in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through a few examples. I'm going to show you how it works and where and when I use it in my code versus async so we can get that extra speed boost and as I said depending on your CPU it could be 5, 10, 12 times as quick. So this is going to be our first example. What this code does is it goes out to this category and then extracts all the product links and goes to the pages to get them. Now as we are going to be scraping a little bit quicker I'm going to use my proxies in this case so we need to create a new dictionary up here and this is going to be our, we'll create the HTTP protocol one first and this is the string that you'll get from Node Maven, HTTPS ones, and the same thing goes in there. Save, and that formats it nicely. And then all we have to do is we have to just put this in here. So we say proxies is equal to proxies like so. Okay, so my code editor is going to complain here. Um, I'm just going to ignore it because it does still work. So next thing we want to do is we want to import in concurrent futures. So from concurrent.futures, we're going to import in the thread pool executor like so. So let's go down here and have a look at our main function. We're taking in a category, which is essentially what this is, and then we're getting the details from this. Well, what happens, let's say we want to go to get from multiple categories, we'd have to go through all through one, then go through all through the next one, then all through the next one, but we can do this much better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this function from main to run, and this is going to take in a category now. 
and we're going to use this to pass in URLs here. So now I'm going to come down and create, recreate my main function, like here, and we'll start to create some categories. Let's so do pass under this, and then we'll run everything. So let's just quickly go to the website, and we'll come over here, and this is a different category here. Same website, same way of working. Um, so let's just check that the pagination is the same. Yeah, it is cool. So let's go ahead and create a category then under here. This one is lenses, it's going to be equal to, and we'll make this a dictionary, and we'll call this lenses, we'll give it a name. Name is lenses, and a URL, which is going to be this, and we need to chop the number off the end. And I've messed up this, but that's fine, we'll fix that here, like so. Okay, so let's just check that this is going to work first. So now we're going to say we're going to take in our run function is going to take in a category and the URL instead of all of this is going to be the category.url. So this is now this, so category dot and it's a dictionary URL and this needs to be single quotes because we're within inside our F string and page so that should work. And then we can do here, uh, run, and pass in the lenses category. So I'm going to save this. We're going to come over to our code, our runner, to our uh, function. I'm going to run this. We can see we're in the lenses category. And we should be grabbing the data here. And we should see the name and everything start to pop up. And we are working just fine. So this is good. So now we have this um, category sorted out here. We can create multiple of these now. And we paste this underneath. And let's do another one. Let's grab. Um, Go back out here, same, and grab a cameras one, for example. Grab the URL for that, and paste that in here instead, and change this name to cameras. And we'll just check that this works now. So we should be in the digital cameras section, and there's the first one popping up there, working great. But let's, if we were to run this synchronously, we would have to call our run function on the lenses and then on the cameras, so we would loop through it. So let's say our cats is going to be equal to a list of lenses and cameras. And then we would do something like this. We would do for cat and cats, we would run the category, like so. At this point, we're almost the same amount of lines of code away from having the thread pool executor working. So all we need to do is, with the thread pool executor as, and we always call this executor here, we're going to do executor dot uh, map, and then we pass in the function, which is our run, and then we pass in our list of categories like so. And in here we can specify the number of workers. I'm going to put this, I'm going to leave this as blank at the moment. I'm going to put in max workers as well, I think, here before we carry on. So let's go ahead and run this now. And hopefully, yep, we can see that we get two URLs coming up, and this is going to, each one is in a different thread. So now we are running both scrapers for each category simultaneously across different threads. Now this is only going to get quicker the more categories we add. So let's go ahead and do that. So, so I've added in a few more categories, and we have four. So now when we come over here to run this, like so, we have four going at the same time. This is just going to greatly speed up our web scraping experience. As you can see, it's already much quicker. Now, this isn't the only way you can do this. Basically, you've got to think that if you can create a function that does a job and give it a set of URLs to do the job against, you can then do that. So what we could feasibly do is if we didn't want to do categories, is we could give the job, we could scrape the the uh, product links from each page and then create a function to get those and do that instead. So you go to every uh, every list page, create, get all the links, and then um, using threading and the thread pool executor, go and get all of the data from each of the product pages at the same time or up to as many threads as you have. So this is very, very easy to put in. All I had to do was basically rework a tiny bit of my code at the bottom here. I didn't really change much of this and we've made this run four or five times as quick and it's going to only can get more and more exponentially from there. So this is essentially the same code but this just uses Playwright instead of the uh, other method of actually getting the data and as you can see I have my proxies put in here so go and get yours uh, and then we have our let our categories down here the only difference is in this case I put it as a data class I mean that wasn't entirely necessary I just did it in this case to uh, to make it a bit easier for me to read and manage and we have the same thing here here here's our four uh, 
categories and then we're basically running it against those categories. So if I save this and this one's called PW main. So let's stop this one from running. It was just going in the background there. Run this and this is gonna be a bit more of a clear example because you'll see that each each sort of uh, browser window represents a page, so to speak, and it's flicking through and getting all the products that you can see coming through on the left hand side there. So this is a really good way of basically just adding in making your code run faster. It's really good, it's really handy, and I, I use it, I tend to lean towards this um, rather than async in a lot of cases just because it's so simple to put in and it can make your code much, much quicker. So hopefully you've got something from this video. If you have and you wanna know how I built all these web scrapers to scrape this site and how I use other, other things to get the data that I wanna do, you're gonna wanna watch this video here next.